You know, I mean, <laughs> I mean, obviously there's the people, you know, the record, the obvious and the records that you would think, you know, that early 70 Stone stuff and the Faces and Rod Stewart's early stuff and early Springsteen and uh, early Van Morrison stuff. But also, you know, the local, the local music community was a big influence on me um, because my dad was close to those guys, and also because, I, you know. Just because because those guys were here, you know, and I, I was around them a lot. You know, Pat Hazel's uh, youngest son, David, is one of my best friends. And, um, that really showed me that it was possible, you know, to do just like I think, you know, for Ben and Dave Huckfeld, you know, to see that, to see that there's people around here in the community that are doing this for a living, that it's not just, you know, something that you know, famous people do in LA and New York. This, this, is, a, right. this is a vocation that, and, a, and a craft that you can work and it can be something you do. So, you know, um, that's really, and you know, I think Will would say the same thing. Will Whitmore would say the same mm -hmm. thing. Seeing guys like me or, or, you know, some of the older guys that I worked with, I think was a big influence on Will. And, and um, sure. it got Will started doing it and thinking he can do it and not, you know, feeling like, you know, like I said, you have to go somewhere else, and I think that's real important. That's, to me, the great legacy of Trailer Records was that, you know, was being, um, you know, we were we were fortunate to get a lot of press, you know, where the press was real good to us in Iowa. Right, right. But, um, you know, I think it showed younger people, younger aspiring musicians that there was, you know, that that, that was a possible, uh, you know, a possible thing to pursue. That's... That's one of the things that I tried to do with Midwest Review too, yeah. to show people that you don't have to go to L.A. No, or right. New York. And, and you know, it was it was things like you know what you were doing, or people like Sandy Dyes doing all the photographs for trailer, right. or the record stores, or the clubs. All these things are necessary to create a scene, you know, to create a a, a culture where you know young people can feel like this, you know. And I was distinctly aware of that. And um, even while I was doing it, even though I didn't know what the fuck I was doing, I was always aware of the fact <laughs> right. that, that that was, you know, essential to, to there being anything. And I also knew that, you know, <laughs> that it wasn't going to happen unless I did the work. It's money. I mean, these guys weren't going to get back together. And it's, unfortunately, you know, most musicians and most artists, they don't feel in a family way towards each other. They're competitive and they're yeah. weird and they're fucking neurotic and insecure. <laughs> so... <laughs> And those aren't, you know, as I've got many faults, but those aren't some of them. And I certainly don't associate those things with, with music. And so I knew that I was going to, as long as I could manage to balance that and, and do what needed to be done, it would be around. But the minute I couldn't, it, w it would be gone. And that's exactly what happened. You know? Yeah. Um, so it's unfortunate. I wish there would have been somebody to kind of carry on. <laughs> but, you know, but somebody will, you know, and, and, uh, and people right. are, you know.